Hello there. Welcome to the second video in the series Old Photos of Scotland. This one's about shops. I've got some cracking images for you. Let's just get started. Well, here we are in the Canongate area of Edinburgh in 1925. Much of what you can see here is now the Museum of Edinburgh, and while this attractive jumble of ancient buildings has been much renovated over the centuries, they remain largely intact and little changed in appearance inside and out. We can see a pub and a number of shops, a sweetie shop, at what looks like a grocer, with adverts for Lyons Tea and Coleman's Starch. We can also see a number of folk hanging out of windows, wondering what's going on. A little further up the Cannon Gate now, to a 17th century tenement known as Bible Land. About the only thing that survives in this photo is the carved bit of stone above the doorway. All buildings in view were rebuilt in the 1950s, although they still have an old feel about them and look kinda similar. Not sure when this photo was taken, clearly before the rebuild, but we can get a good glimpse inside John Sharp's shop. All sorts of edible goodies in there, Airburst biscuits, lion's tea, margarine, and all manner of stuff. A great insight into shop window displays of what is probably the late 19th or early 20th century. Through to Glasgow now, and this image may be strangely familiar to anyone who drinks in Cooper's Bar at the corner of Bank Street and Great Western Road in the city's West End. For this was once a rather grand grocer's. The photo dates to the 1890s, and we can see fruit and vegetables laid out on a table, and all manner of tins and jars stacked high at the counter on the left. I actually remember it when it was Cooper's Fine Fair back in the 1980s. Today, the interior looks similar, but not quite as grand as it was back then. The bar counter is in the same place as the original counter, the stairs that the photo was taken from have gone, and while the iron columns still support the building above, they have been stripped of what I presume was a decorative plaster coating, and are now quite plain. Back to Edinburgh, this time around 1910, and a fascinating glimpse of some shops located on the Royal Mile, opposite St Giles Cathedral. Just below the sign for Bert Scott Brass Founder is Advocates Close, originally a medieval passage. The buildings above and on either side of it have been architecturally fiddled with over the centuries, with some renovation, rebuilding and even demolition. But the general feel today remains one of considerable age. If we zoom in, we can see a sweetie shop a general sales room and an ice cream parlour, the latter bearing first floor windows that look similar today. And, of course, we have some children hanging around hoping for a sweet treat or two. I'm always mildly amazed by the sheer numbers of staff they had in shops in the old days. It's around 1905, and 23 members of staff are standing outside a clothes shop on Main Street, Stenhouse Muir. Just two men, and everyone's wearing a hat. Very smart. 
Located opposite the Plough Hotel, this building has probably been demolished. More women and some rather extravagant hats outside a women's clothes shop in Market Street, Bowness, around 1910. Such hats must have been good when it was raining, as it looks like they're wearing an umbrella on their head. Inside a shop this time, and another veritable horde of staff. This is Pierk's store in Falkirk's High Street in 1920. It must have been a tad intimidating wandering into such a shop for a roll in ham or a tin of soup and finding all these folk looking at you. Another shop, and this time it's just one guy and his dog. Never have I seen a man so utterly pleased to have his photo taken. It's 1901, and this is a grocer and wine and spirit merchant located beside the Sheep's Heat Inn in Duddingston. It's a great photo of a very proud man, presumably Charles Dalgleish himself whose window displays reveal all manner of early 20th century goods. We have Rowentree's cocoa, Cairns gooseberry jelly, and a tantalising array of whisky and other spirits like Martell's Three Star Brandy. Inside another shop, and a couple who look a bit scared at the prospect of having their photo taken. This is Janet and Arthur Irvin in their shop at 186 Kenmuir Street in the Pollock Shields area of Glasgow around 1945. The Second World War is about to end, so looking slightly weary is perhaps understandable. Most of their customers would have used ration cards to buy goods and life must have been very hard indeed. The rationing of food continued right up into the 1950s. A great array of goods on the shelves, like Scots Oats and Semolina. William Wade's High Class Provisions in 1906 the shop was located at 302 Allison Street in the Govan Hill area of Glasgow. Amongst all the other things going on in the window display, there's a good range of different types of bacon, like Ayrshire bacon, a speciality, Belfast smoked bacon, American bacon, boiled bacon, mild cured bacon, and so on. A similar size of shop, with one window and one door. This butcher's, photographed around 1910, was at 139 Castle Street in Glasgow, more or less opposite the Royal Infirmary, in an area of tenements long gone. It must have been difficult entering the premises without rubbing up against a whole dead sheep or two. A rather fascinating image dating to 1890. We're looking at the Kirkgate in Leith, and another shop with much of its dead stock suspended from the frontage. It's a fishmonger and licensed game dealer, and that's a lot of plucked chickens hanging there. A great insight into not just shops of the period, but of the type of clothing worn back then. On the left of the photo, 
Beside the cat is a woman who would not look out of place as the evil witch in some pantomime. All buildings shown have gone. Another absolutely cracking image. This is the Nethergate in Dundee around 1870. It's a great photo for any number of reasons, not least because of all those adverts on the gable end. Simonton's coffee essence, green lease whiskey, and, most interesting of all, Bell House's anti-rheumatic towel. But if we zoom in a little, there's something even more interesting in front of the wine and spirit merchants. A man with a basket of bottles on his head. The mind boggles. Yet another great photo, this time in Leven Street in Edinburgh. It shows the site of the King's Theatre, clearly before work began on its construction in 1905. A whole range of interesting shops there, from greengrocers to grocers and picture framers. If we zoom in, we can see that J.Y. Wilson was famed for its bananas and tomatoes were a speciality. And I suppose the main question is, what are all these children doing there? Were some of them delivering fruit and veg to nearby houses? Clearly a fairly well-to-do area, given that all the children are wearing shoes. Remaining in Edinburgh, this time on the west side of St Mary Street, off the Royal Mile, around the first quarter of the 20th century. This quaint row of old buildings has vanished, to be replaced by typical bland modern structures. Good range of old shops here, and if we zoom in we can see a bit more detail. One of the children is not wearing shoes, and the tobacconist's shop has what is presumably a carved wooden head outside. Tobacconists often had wooden figures at their entrance, sometimes Red Indians and sometimes Highlanders. A shop frontage probably familiar to some folk alive today, as the style continued well into the 20th century. This is Andrew Cochran's Grocers in Duke Street in 1938, one of a chain of almost a hundred shops in Glasgow. Within the busy window display is a sign for new laid Irish eggs. A close up of a shop window in 1920. It's the co-op in Leith Walk in Edinburgh and as well as jam, there appears to be quite an emphasis on breakfast oats. North side of Edinburgh's lawn market on the Royal Mile around 1920. And I'm delighted to say that all these buildings still exist today. On the far left is a National Trust for Scotland's property, Gladstone's Land, a preserved 17th century merchant's house that you can visit. And on the right of that is the smaller building with the stone plaque stating that when Robert Burns lived in Edinburgh, he stayed in a house nearby. If we zoom in, we can see some detail in the shops not to mention a horse and cart delivering bottles of something. Perhaps beer to the pub, or soft drinks to the cafe. A more recent photo, dating quite precisely to October 1965. It shows the foot of the Royal Mile in Edinburgh, 
by the roundabout near the palace of Holyrood House. The only building in the photo that survives today is the old one on the left. Everything else has gone and been replaced with modern housing. It's a glimpse of one of many areas of Edinburgh that have all but vanished. We can see a corner pub by an old arched pend and a butcher's and fruit shop. You'd be hard pushed to find a butcher's or indeed any shop that sold life's necessities anywhere in the area now. Still in Edinburgh, and an even more precise date for this photo, the 8th of April 1954. It shows Princess Street at its junction with Frederick Street, a busy area with shops and lots of folk wearing coats. Must have been cold. It's a snapshot of how Edinburgh used to be, when shops were bustling and there were no for sale signs. Today, Edinburgh's Princess Street, like many streets in Scotland's towns and cities, is struggling, with way too many vacant shops, and shops selling what at best may be described as tourist tat. A glimpse of those good old days, and not that long ago. Bulkirk High Street now, around the 1890s, and here we see John Lang standing proudly in the doorway of his shop. Good window displays and a variety of whiskies on offer. A bit closer to home for me, in this shot of Castlebank Street in the party area of Glasgow around 1890. This row, including the shop in the middle, once sat near the left of what is now the Byers Road garage. It's 1929 and we're in East Richmond Street in Edinburgh, a part of West Richmond Street once located between Richmond Place and Pleasance. As well as folk either hanging out of windows or generally milling around, we have a shop selling famous pies. Always hot. Buildings either side of the Venel in Edinburgh's grass market in 1914. As is often the case with Edinburgh's buildings, it can be difficult telling if a current building is a renovated or even rebuilt old one, or a more recent structure. Certainly the Salvation Army Women's Hostel on the right is original, as built in 1910. But the building shown on the left of the Venel stairs has probably gone and been replaced by one that has certain similarities. We can see a chemist and butchers, and once again you'd be hard pushed to find a shop selling such basic essentials in the area today. Still in Edinburgh, this time at 64 and 66 Morrison Street around 1920, at an attractive higgledy-piggledy row of shops that are no longer with us. We have a green grocer and the ubiquitous advert for Fry's chocolate. This area is now full of modern bland buildings.
last but not least, and we're looking at the co-op shop in Grangemouth's Nelson Street in 1923, great window displays in a property that is now a house. Back then, shops selling everything we needed in our daily lives were within easy reach. I'm not sure we could say the same thing these days. Well, that was shops. Change days indeed. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm Eddie Burns. Bye for now.